What up, weirdos? This is episode 37, Venture Ventures. We're going to play some D&D here in a second after I get through this short intro and recap what happened last time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a new player uh, real quick. This is Kyle, and Kyle will be introducing his character in a bit. In a bit. So uh, without further ado, last time on Venture Ventures... The group caught up with Max Morningbrow at Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency in Ista. Through his proprietary matching uh, machine algorithm, Max matched Rylos Blackweed with the group to fill out their ranks. They met with the Baba Yaga in her massive tree hut that towers over the Nest District in Ista. The Baba needed to hire an adventuring party to track down her iron teeth. The Baba required that they de defeat her magical familiar before hiring them, rather than taking Sarah Sierra's ex-member of Venture of Big Bedfellows, uh, rather than taking her word for it. They entered a large stone room full of flowers, beautiful daisies and such. That's the extent of my flower knowledge, uh, which was just the Baba, ba Baba Yaga's petal dragon familiar in disguise. Uh, they attacked the familiar without provocation, and the dragon defended itself by singing beautiful music, which only made the group more angry. And <laughs> the dragon did not attack back, and eventually they did damage it to make it poof out of existence, and therefore accomplishing the task given to them. Uh, and lastly, this DM is sick of saying the gang or the group, so this group needs to come up with a team name today, or this DM is going to make one up for you, and I'm very right, good at that. I have about 12 of them written down that I can oh, good. before the gang. <laughs> really? Let's hear them. Are they all the big bad fellows? All right, all right. So we got Ankle Biters Anonymous. Uh, that's, that's leading right now. That's leading my favorite. Uh, Biggie Smalls Crew. Ooh, also good. Short Fuse, excuse me, Short Fuse Hooligans. The, the Overlooked, The Short List, Small World Monarchs, Micro Muscles, uh, Bite Sized Bitch Hunters. Or bounty yes. hunters, I suppose. Yes. Um, I've been watching Thirty Rock, uh, and uh, Knee High Marauders are the ones that I came up with so far. Enjoy. God, they're all too good. I did like the first one I came up with the best. <laughs> I do as well. I think the first one might have have my vote. Ankle Biters Anonymous. Works for me. Yeah, you, I think that on. one's great. I, I have a soft spot for the overlooked. I also <laughs> like the shortlist a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's some winners in there. there there's some real winners in there's there. There's some good ones. But you I guys also like decide. Biggie Smalls crew. Come Can on. Can you guys see me? Yes. 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 Can. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I gave you too many options. Well,. I like them all because I came up with them. So hey, how many are there? There are twelve. There's twelve. Do we want to roll a d12 or narrow it down no, and then? Not, there's, there's let's 10. narrow it down. Okay. There's, yeah. Let's narrow there's it down. 10. Yeah, we can do yeah. that. All right. I'm Ankle taking biters it. definitely in there. Ankle biters. Ankle biters. I like the overlooked. The overlooked, the short list, and the bite-sized bitch hunters. So yes. out of five. Kyle, feel free to pop. In and uh, I am okay with any of the ones that were just mentioned. So, if we can take yeah. out one more, then we have a D4 roll. <laughs> Lex? So this is the current list. Mm. Lex, are you cool with that? I, I, I say, like the. I'd I say just... take out bite sized bitch hunters, but that's just I, me because I like the. I was gonna say, I love that one. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> like that one too. Just the fact that you say bitch. I would take out Biggie Smalls for me. I agree. Biggie Smalls for me as well. Alright, let's take that one out and roll right. a d4. We'll go ahead and give this God, a roll. I know what I want. To, I know which one I want, you guys. We landed on the short list. 
Okay. I, like I can live with that. Okay. I can live with that. What right. did the DM want? What did the DM want? I liked Ankle Biters Anonymous, but I also liked the Overlook just because I can refer to it in in social media as the Overlooked ventured to the Feywild. And so now it's going to be the, the short list. list. It still works, but yeah. Do All right. you want us to change it? I'm not <laughs> Listen. I mean, no, listen. The dice have spoken. It's shortlist two, now. Two out of three. To be fair, uh, I to like be, the shortlist. To, to be fair, Brian has cursed dice rolling apparatus. So this is true. Uh, say I have no good dice. I don't know. Maybe you should do two out of three. <laughs> Guys, we can we all are, roll we, and we take the, the majority. Because I got another three. All right, it's you're the shortlist. Okay. All right. The short list it is. Okay. Alright, this is... How come I can't see myself? You, I can see you. Oh, yay. My, ca my camera keeps freezing after three seconds. Oh, so well. I'll just I look with... ridiculous on my screen. No, yeah, you're fine I on don't... mine. I just have a loading circle on mine the entire time. No, so you're well. totally good. Alright. Yeah, I can see you. That's fun. Alright, gang, as you're exiting the second room on the left uh, that you entered um, and you go out into the hallway and you see Baba the Baba is lounging on a chaise lounger next to or across from Sarah Sierra and the Baba is talking at talking at Sarah more than uh, it being a conversation and the Baba saying I just don't know what to call it. Lo-fi post-grung transmutation? I get so bored with the traditional school genres, I invented bubble trance gore grind evo chantment. Crack and crank conjuration, ectofolk illuration, divinatory amalian glam rock, necto thrash sign, cursed punk. Oh, oh. Hello. I don't want to be affected by any of the things you were just talking about. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm just... I get so bored with magic. It's... Whew, it's a long story. So, how did it go in there? Uh, it, it went uh, great. Yeah, let's not talk about it. We won, we're here, that's all that matters, right? I don't suppose you sell, like, potions that could knit wounds back together. Could you, possibly? For who? kind of stop and look around be like us anybody else i genuinely <laughs> don't remember how much damage you guys took but it uh if you guys are what are you guys at right now i'm uh, doing okay i'm at 41 so i'm fine i'm at 56 i'm fine y'all y'all have hp <laughs> All right. Uh, if you're looking rough rylos uh i mean I'm, I'm a little bit above half but like i don't want to get hit again Okay. Uh, the Baba will mutter a few words and wave her hand in the air and say, Mirtha, just stand there for a bit, I guess. Uh, Rylos, this is Mirtha. And you see this spectral figure, figure in front of you. And uh, the Baba goes, Mirtha, um, you know what to do. Rylos, uh, she's going to heal you. So... Okay. Uh, just stand next to her and she'll, uh, you know, close up those wounds for you. Anyways, uh, give me a second here while I call back my familiar, uh, Aldous. And you spellcasters know that casting things like find familiar, actually none of you, now that I'm thinking about it, none of you are wizards. You have some general idea, usually you probably know that's a ritual the Baba does it in seconds and uh, right in front of you appears this humanoid figure with petals for flower petals for skin and uh, the Baba starts talking to her familiar between themselves and the Baba, you just hear the Baba going uh-huh yes well I, I wasn't specific, I just said defeat, so I was curious if they were going to, you know, do the 
combat thing or if they were going to talk to you, but uh, no matter, they defeated you. What, what And it uh, goes on like that, and then all this uh, snaps its fingers, and uh, a giant armoire pops into existence, and uh, the Baba turns back to you and says, uh, is looking at you and your confused expressions, and it says, oh, sorry, uh, my familiar Aldous has a familiar... Uh, this is Rosie the Mimic. Uh, it's 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 fine. You're you're fine. All this doesn't hold grudges. I've done this before. We've been together for centuries. It's no big deal. Uh, let's just move on to business. I would like to hire you now that you've proven yourself for the job of finding my iron teeth that got away from me. So. Uh, if you accept, I will be able to give you the required instrument uh, that will help you find them, as well as uh, we can begin negotiations as to what your payment may be. Works for me. Yeah, that's why we came here, so let's get to it. Okay, so here is... She walks over to a cabinet and pulls out a metal helmet, beautiful silver, very shiny, reflective silver, and uh, there are relief eyes in it, uh, sculpted into it, and all over it, um, on just about every surface, and uh, they're not moving or anything. Uh, but um, if you're not looking at it, you, you are drawn to look at it again, almost like the eyes are looking at you. But when you look back at it again, it's not moving. Uh, and she goes, These, this is a helm of opened eyes that will help you track down. The teeth are quite capable of invisibility and such. So, uh, just wear this when you're within... Uh, 120 feet, or you think you're you're within 120 feet, it will give you true sight, uh, which will help you. I've sent adventuring parties many many centuries ago to track down my iron teeth when they've gone missing in the past, and without something like this or being so, uh, you know, much more experienced. Uh, it's nearly impossible, to be quite frank. And she hands it over to you, and I will get you the rest of the... Oh, she does say, uh, oh yes, when you're wearing it, uh, you don't want to wear it for too long. Um, basically every few seconds, uh, you're going to feel a little pin in your brain and it's gonna hurt more and more and if you leave it on well I assume you'll die but uh, let just if it's hurts don't keep it on it's pretty simple uh, okay and who takes the helm of opened eyes I'll take that okay one second while I copy this magic item and put it in the Discord. Brian, can you make a magic item for this or just do something or other to remember what it does? I certainly can. Uh, now down to payment. Uh, what do you think is fair for this little sojourn into the Feywild? Uh, do you guys want money, or do you want some more nifty magic item? Um, or do well, you want actually, information? I kind of need a favor. You seem like you're pretty well connected. How good are you at finding people? Uh, quite, quite, quite good. As long as there is no 
anti-detection magic around them, so quite good. Well, I can only speak for myself, but that would be payment enough for me if you could locate one or one of a couple people. I'm quite sure I can, even if I can't locate the exact, you know, position and see them, I think I'll be able to at least narrow it down. I believe you. I believe you're capable of that. Okay. But, uh, I'll, I'll let my party members uh, name their own price. Okay, so we got one for a favor. What? Oh. Tattoo That's... problem. Yeah, it's like that... a giant You've bundle had that of problems. You've had that tattoo for so long. Um, but it means actually, something. I, for... I forgot. Actually, about that. can you show us that real quick? Like yes, I was just, just about to say. Now I don't know this guy. We can't. I can't just like. No, it's too personal at the moment. Okay. Well, well can you describe it? Address? Yes. But I'm mostly fur anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. You shave it, you know? No. I, Just making I suggestions. Very, I feel very uncomfortable right now. Well, yeah, um, we won't worry about it. DM Jake. Yeah. Uh, I have seen it before, now that I had my whole uh, interaction with that creepy dude who kept smiling at me. Uh, was it at all a similar grin? No. Uh, okay. The the one that was smiling at you was a comforting that. smile and not at all unnatural. Right. It didn't okay. make you feel weird. The one on Ashwin's back that Orson found waking up in the underneath the mountains in the Virenal Dominion was mm -hmm. uh, a huge grin very creepy and disconcerting. Gotcha. I kept meaning to ask that and I kept forgetting. Yep. So thanks. <laughs> uh, so Ashlyn, can you describe what it uh, looks like then? Uh, I mean, I've been told it looks like a creepy grin. <laughs> I can't see for certain. It's on my back. Well... It could be a number of things, but if, you know, I can, after this is all done, I can look into it, do some research. I know a lot of very, very powerful people who have the resources. If I don't know what exactly is going on, I can definitely connect you with them, if that's the case. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that sounds good. Especially since I heard it has to do with the whole, like, you know, like the text disappearing and us kind of forgetting a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's all tied to that baloney. The, the erasure. I have never heard it referred to as baloney, but I do like that, what that sounds like on the tongue. The baloney erasure. Uh, so, you, sir, young Kenku, Prati, what... <laughs> Dave. Uh, what, what do you want, Dave? Prodi. Um, uh, I would just like, uh, for you to tell me more about my, my rod of, of seven parts and possibly where the next piece is. Sure, I can definitely look into that. I can tell you a little bit about it right now if you agree that that's what you want for this favor you're doing Wait, for me. can you make him fly? You could put, maybe she can make you fly. I can make him fly for a certain amount of time, certainly not, I can't remove that wicked infernal curse that was placed upon him and his kind. Dry. It's up you to really, body. 
You really want me to fly, Ashwin? Oh, I, I think it might make you happy. Happier. Uh, I don't know. That would make me happy, but but just to, to be to be doing something that I want to do for just such a limited time, something I want so badly, it's almost like torture. Uh, it's a tough, tough call. I think I, I think I'd rather just keep working on my rod of seven parts. Okay. I just thought I should put that out there. It is not Bayaga who can like, I have, give you a lot of things. I have thought about just getting the spell fly as a ritual, but, uh, Maybe another time. Can you sweeten the pot and like throw in that for him? <laughs> I can cast fly on him once, sure. Like just a freebie? Yeah, I mean obviously I have to be near you. I can do that for you next time. I can do it for you right now. Or I can do it when you get back. Oh yeah, yeah let's do it right now. Are you sure? You did mention that it may be quite painful, being that it is only a limited amount of time. I guess I'll just have to find out. Okay. It's better to, it's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. I'm not so sure about that, young Rylos, but uh, I'll let you learn that lesson. Uh, all this... And she turns to the humanoid figure with the petal skin, uh, Easter-colored petal skin, and she says, Aldous, would you mind... Uh, I don't have fly prepared. Would you mind doing this uh, for young Prada here? And Aldous, without a word, starts kind of humming in a similar beautiful tone but not painful or entrancing as you had just experienced in the room uh, starts humming and all of a sudden you feel yourself lift off the ground and she says oh. we're in Baba Yaga's store you're in her hut her, her oh, hut yeah. on top of the tree and uh, so you can get I, like 10 feet off the ground and she says Prati, uh, there's a porch out there that will, uh, just go out that door. There's a porch right there. If you'd like to fly, you know, higher, uh, just go head out that Prati door. Prati just is very tentatively just like, okay. And he kind of floats over to the porch. And then he just, I, I'm assuming flying is just like the same body, like just levitating. Yeah, there's no... Right flapping uh yeah, yeah, yeah. going on so it made that so he just kind of like doesn't know what's happening but he kind of will himself yep to go higher and he's just like oh my god i'm hey, so Bobby. high oh my god there's baba yaga's hut down there oh my god i can see all of the whole city <laughs> this is so magical oh uh, I mean, probably just like, probably just like it's like overwhelmed emotionally. It's just like very just in shock. Just his tear, his his eyes like just well up with tears. Yeah, and you can see um, just circling. You can see the ista, the lower portion of an ista, and you can see the raving straits the gap in between the two portions of the continent uh and you see with its whatever is causing its illusory uh issue over the water there uh that's been there for thousands of years uh you see it just kind of turns that area of the bay because you're pretty high up it turns that area of the bay into like a an opaque marble almost um, looking down on it. So uh, you do see other birds flying around you, and uh, some of them give you a look, others don't, but yeah. Friday just goes, Cool! Cool! And he 
he makes that 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 crow sound like yeah the uh well, they they like cluck kind of yeah the it's kind of a clicking cluck yeah yeah um versus their caw yeah Friday gets all choked up and how long does fly last an hour I oh think. wow sweet uh, yeah, Prati just kind of... And how far away from you can I get? Um, that's a good question. Guess, yeah, so he just trying to test the boundaries of it. and He's, he's like, flying closer to different parts of the city. Probably wants to go um, the Arbor Green and heads in that direction. And I guess at some point he kind of... Oh, check starts that. To, starts Ten. to waver. 10 minutes <laughs> so uh you would have been told that and um like i'm not gonna freaking uh you obviously wouldn't have tried to cross the bay and get back in 10 minutes that would have being not even being conservative just being a level-headed person you would be like nope that's not enough time um yeah, so Prady just goes, takes a takes a lap around the block and comes back. Excellent. Uh, okay. And he just goes, he goes, he just takes Ashwin by the shoulders, just like, thank you so much for suggesting that, Ashwin. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that was amazing. You're welcome. Anything for a friend? And uh, you head back Thank down. And everyone's still in the Baba's house and she says, well, I hope that was a good experience for you, Prati. Uh, do you still want me... Do you still want the favor? A favor for a favor, essentially? I will... Uh, is that still what you want? Or... Yeah, that'd be great. Sounds good. The, uh... Anything you can tell me about the Rod of Seven Parts? Maybe where the the next piece is? Yeah, I can tell you. you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into the mechanics of looking for it right now, of course. Uh, but I will tell you a little bit just off the top of my dome. Uh, the Rod of Seven Parts is uh, was used to defeat an agent of pure chaos by the... Avorals, which are much like yourself, uh, celestial avian, avian in nature, and uh, yes, that's pretty much the great, the great chaos, uh, a great chaos, an agent of chaos, and her lover. Pure chaos. And the rod, when it interacted with this person's this person's lover, it trapped him in another plane, and the rod was shattered, and its parts were spread across the material plane, but also across many other planes. This is the this is the knowledge that I have right now. I think it's pretty close to correct. I don't have specifics, but we'll get into the specifics. I'll do some research provided you uh, do this favor for me. Uh, does that sound good? Um, so when I'm in another plane, I should still use the map mimic. Uh, so you will see how the map mimic interacts on another plane, but um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so we got the 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 uh Rylos. Hmm. I oh. mean, I'm real simple, like gold. Cool magic sure. things, trinkets. Sure. What were you thinking? I don't know what you have. I mean, Rylos, uh, 
I have seen you eye books before. I'm sure you've read books. I'm sure you've heard like books. heard some things on the streets and by eavesdropping probably upon some Aspel Arcana members. There's plenty of things out there. If you want something sp specific, we can talk about that. If you just want a certain amount of something, let's talk. Make an offer. That's so many options. Oh, I know, babe. Well, I'm going to have to think about that. Can I just... Like, when we come back, can, then can I, like, counter off of, like, is this good? Is like, or, like, like, a level? I could be like, you know... Rylos, if you do this for me, I'm going to be fair with you. Uh, that's That's what I do, babe. So just... We're not going to... It's part of what got me in trouble with the two queens on the other plane. Uh, they don't much appreciate fairness in many regards. Uh, and then you hear kind of a high-pitched scoff. And uh, she goes, oh, yeah, forgot. Uh, well, if you're going to find these... these uh, these teeth of mine, you're going to need a guide, and I have just one such guide. Uh, Austerin, babe, can you come out here, please? And, uh, Kyle, why don't you describe what they see when Austerin comes into the room? Give me one second. Uh, did I just hear you land on my bum? Right, look, so. I think Bob Yaga was hitting on you. <laughs> All right. So before the party appears kind of like this glittering globe of soft light, uh, the intensity kind of dims a little bit, uh, similar to that of the candlelight, but the hue is very pink and rosy. Within the glowing orb is a hovering pixie with pink hair, uh, glittering wings. Uh, he's dressed in a lot of very lavish looking garments of lavender flowers. Uh, he bows before the ugly creatures before him. <laughs> oh no. Dude, did we just, did we get another Nihilus? Uh... Are you going to say that to my face? <laughs> he doesn't say it. He just bows. He's just thinking like, oh my gosh, they're all so ugly. Okay. Um... Blessed be, friends. I'm a star in Whisper Wings. Attendant of Queen Titania of the Feywilds. First of her name, Stewardess of Summer. I am grateful for all of you to be here today. Okay, that's quite Bobby that's Yaga. quite enough, young Austin. Only child. <laughs> <laughs> and man, Baba Baba starts laughing. <laughs> oh Prati, that's brilliant. Oh, remind me to write that one down. Oh, what am I saying? I got two familiars here. Write that down. So, Austerin is going to be your guide, and, uh... Oh, you need some, some, uh, general information about where my teeth might have gone, of course. Uh, so, there are three places that they like to go. Okay, so, uh, it, number one, it... And this is in no particular order. Uh, it could be... I have no reason to believe any location is better than the other to start searching. So it's really up to you and whatever. Uh, the location number one is the Fey Dark. Uh, in the Glen of Favored Dreams. That's all I got. I've never been to their house there, but... Uh, this is the information. Second, uh, second place is in the realm of King Oberon and the Court of Spring. The third place is in the realm of the Pumpkin King. Actually, I'm not sure if he's still the king. If he's, he was when I was last, it probably could be anything. But in the realm of the Pumpkin King, uh, in the Court of Autumn, uh... One of the, if you go to, if you go to that location, the Mouse King there, his name is, uh, King Zipatip. Good guy, knows a lot, keeps his ear to the ground. Uh, he will know if that location that they go to 
It's uh, called the Crow's Nest, and he will know if there's been anything astirring in the nest or whatnot. And, um, yeah, that's the information I got. Uh, Staren will guide you to the Fay Crossing, uh, just north northwest of Calliers, uh, just south of here. And, uh, yes, if there's nothing else, um. I, I do have one more thing, Baba. Um, just while we're while we're out, uh, do, can you do anything with this? And I start trying to wrestle uh, the massive amount of flail snail shell. Out of <laughs> oh my yay! Holding that I have. And it takes you guys um, like thirty some, minutes. Like, oh yeah, I need to like recruit help to to make wait, this happen. Did, did we we broke them up, did we? We did. They're still huge pieces. I okay, have so I take out my, my bag alone. Mine as well. We, we have a whole bunch of this stuff, and it's supposed to be like magical, and you're, you're into magic stuff. Is there anything you can do with this? And while you guys, it's it takes at least thirty minutes, and she has her her um, her familiars help you, including the mimic who just sticks its tongue out. And mimics are very, very, very sticky. Sticks its tongue out and puts it on one of these shell pieces and starts pulling. Uh, and the petal dragon as well starts helping. And once you get it out there, Baba goes and makes herself another cup of tea. Doesn't mention, like, offering any like she had before. Uh, she says to you... Oh, yes, I believe. Uh, where did you find that, may I ask? Um, well, we, we killed a couple of them. Where sure. was that? Up in Verinal Dominion, I think? Outside of it, maybe? It sounds like it. Oh, no, it was, it was in the Dominion. Yeah, I was right up there. <laughs> okay, well, interesting creatures. Uh, Verinal, interesting uh, what happened there with the, uh, you know, mountain collapse and such. But, no, we haven't uh, heard Oh, you haven't. We, we heard a bit, but we were long gone by the time that happened. Oh, what did you hear? A mountain, Nothing. Something about mountains falling down. That's about a, a scuttle, but. Oh, you just okay. Well, I'm I'm particularly interested in it. It's it's quite fascinating. I think someone has something to do with it, but that's all I'll get into right now. Uh, the flail snail shell. Uh, as I'm sure you saw up close, it's a beautiful shell uh, when it's on the creature. Uh, many people love it for its anti-magic properties. And if you can find someone skilled enough to work it and turn it into really anything you want, uh, you can benefit from some of those traits. Uh, right. I, I, I was hoping uh, you, I'm asking you, you seem like the person who might know how to do that. or know I do, but I don't get my hands dirty. I did That was thousands of years ago I got into oh, armor. I thought you were one of your, your one of, you have acolytes and, and students, right? Surely one of them could use some practice. <laughs> and they have a lot of material to work with. And she starts chuck chuckling to herself, and she goes, <laughs> "Sorry, when you said one of my uh, apprentice apprentices, I immediately thought of Sarah, and that's a ridiculous thought. Uh, she would not be seen anywhere near a hammer. But uh, I may have someone else uh, that could work on these pieces. Uh, of course, uh, so." As I was saying before, I'll go into what you can make out of them. You can make shields. You can make uh, you can make a uh, robe. Well, that one takes a bit of time because you have to grind the shell into a very very fine powder without losing the enchantment, and uh, then you have to essentially hand stitch it into a robe um, and uh, you might have heard that robe is traditionally referred to as the robe of scintillating colors um, so it will change the if you're wanting me to do it in exchange for this favor 
it will change the terms of our deal. So this was more of like a, a side. Like I, we've been lugging it around. I, I was just trying to find someone who could do something with it. Well, what I does he pay you? You, <laughs> my dear, I have more money than I know what to do with. Uh, there was a time in my life where, especially when I first came to the material, where I spent like there was no tomorrow, but quickly that bored me. And so now I really don't spend that. I have everything I need. Uh, I try to help people as much as possible. I can put you in touch with, uh, hmm, what's their name? And she starts thinking as Jake looks up the name of this person. It is, um, yep, nope, yep. All right, um, other than one of my apprentices, I think that the Scarlet Scythe, or whatever they're calling themselves these days, you might not have heard of them, they're a organization that has their fingers in a lot of different things, but uh, one of the things they do is create things with magical properties. And uh, the she stops for a moment, and the petal dragon familiar kind of looks at Baba, and Baba looks like she's listening. And uh, the Baba goes, oh yeah, that's right. Um, they call themselves the Scythian Cerise right now. Who knows what it'll be in a couple centuries, but anyways, they may have entered. I can put you in touch with them uh, when you get back, and for now I can have, well, either I can have Sarah store it somewhere, or I can, uh, you know, you just went to Venture Ventures. I'm sure Max would find a spot for it. He might yell at you and call you some names, but I'm sure he'd do it. I look down at the, the pile of flail snow shell that we just took a half an hour to wrestle out of the bag. Yes. Yeah. We're going to have Sarah find a place for it. That'd be fine. Okay. One second. Yeah. <laughs> and she uh, hold, holds a little silver piece of wire up to her mouth, and Sarah, a few minutes minutes later comes up and it's just like it's on top of a tree this hut so she's breathing real hard from coming up here and uh, the Baba says Sarah I still don't know why you don't just take whatever Sarah, Sarah we have these you see this troll or excuse me the snail shell uh, can you store this for the group. What are we calling you again? Do you have a name? Uh, yeah, we, we're the shortlist now. The shortlist, and yeah. we're, we're the ones left on the shortlist right now. Yeah. And um, Sarah kind of raises an eyebrow, a furbolg eyebrow, thinking about her time with the the group as the big bedfellows and doesn't say anything but you can tell especially you Prati, like she's hearing this name for the first time uh, she doesn't say anything and Sarah says oh yes I can take care of that Baba uh, sure uh, I and she just looks overwhelmed a little bit um, and she turns to you guys and she kind of looks like a light bulb appears over her head not a literal one but she has an idea and uh, she says any chance I can chip a little bit of it off and I can try to make, I just want to experiment with it to make some products, you know, like a face mask or something exfoliating. Would you mind if I chipped just, you know, like, like a gold, a gold piece worth. I mean, she's a friend, right guys? Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Yeah. Have, like 500 yeah. pounds of this in my We don't mind. <laughs> Okay, and Sarah goes, okay, cool, and uh, the Baba says, oh, wonderful, that's taken care of. Um, Osterin, uh, I do appreciate you you guiding them into the Feywild. 
Uh, you know, the normal things. Keep an eye on them. Make sure they don't eat anything they shouldn't eat. Um, we learned that lesson a while ago. But that's no fun. I understand, Austerin. Jesus, you spend too much time with Titania, and this is what you get. Well, either one of them, you'd get the same thing. But listen, Austerin, just if they come back in some other form than they are right now, we wouldn't want relations between the Queen and I to deteriorate, and you wouldn't want to be the one responsible. Of course, your ugliness. He bows once more. <sighs> Sweet mother of God. Good luck, everyone. You're going to enjoy this one. And uh, you guys head out, unless you have other questions. No. To the adventure! To the oh, can adventure. everyone, can everyone like, go around and oh, yeah. tell me what your Sorry about are? that. Um, <laughs> I have no idea yeah. what Rylos, uh, <laughs> we'll start with you. Describe what you look like and who you are, etc. So I'm Rylos Blackweed. Uh, you see a halfling, uh, blonde hair, blonde, like, scraggly beard, but, like, no mustache part of the beard, just so it's, like, the pioneer kind of beard. That's pioneer day, ha ha, pioneer day. Um, <laughs> just wearing very generic dark grays and blues. Nothing special, nothing crazy. What's your class? Rouge. Rouge. Rouge, Rouge. I'll go with Rouge. Of course. Uh, Brian. Uh oh, did Brian freeze? Did we all freeze? Uh, Dave. We'll go to you, Dave. Uh, uh, you see a four and a half foot tall crow, uh, wearing a cloak, uh, very, uh, nicely aligned feathers. He doesn't have wings, he just has arms. Um, uh, and. Yeah, he has a, a very nice-looking uh, rod that he's collecting the pieces of, and he's usually carrying that. Um, i trying to think of what else. Yeah, it's just kind of a black a black cloak, and he's got black feathers. Uh, uh, and Lex. Uh, so I am a two-foot-nothing mouse. I have brown fur. I have a gold hoop on my right ear. Uh, I'm wearing leather armor. I got a shit ton of weapons everywhere. So I just kind of waddle around with that. Uh, there's like a bag of holding. Uh, what else? I got a tail. I do have a tail and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> uh, where do you keep your flaming, uh, your flame tongue? Uh, what? It's probably strapped to the back. Okay. Um, but if, it's, it's a bit too big on the hips. It's magical. I'm sure it fits to your size. It adjusts. Oh, then it's probably on the side, and then I have, like, a bow on my back, and then pretty much all, all the other weapons I rarely use are probably in the bag of holding. Right on. Okay, perfect. And Brian's computer just froze, but I will do my best to describe him. Oh. He, uh... His character is Crispy Oakenshaft. Oakenshaft, I think. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, vaguely, uh, you know, um, the word escapes me. Yeah, uh, it's a euphemism. Um, he's a goblin. He's a monk, a Kensei monk. Uh, Interesting. There's a story be behind him being a goblin. Um, you can ask him that in game. I'm sure he'd love to tell you. Uh, and what else about him? Um, his bag of holding is, is just a bunch of patches of the Aspel Arcana, and the Aspel Arcana is an organization in this world. After the Erasure, I f totally just realized I forgot to tell you anything about that. That's my fault. The Erasure, 200 years ago... Uh, everyone w woke up and forgot. Uh, some people woke up and forgot, like, who's this person next to me? Um, why do I love them? Stuff like that. But the big thing that, that affected the world was all books and writing on walls, including magical. Uh, most books were erased, just blank gone. Uh, 
and uh, all of a sudden some mundane items started, people realized they started having magical properties, one-use magical properties, so a, a, a fork might be able, when activated, might be able to cast cure wounds or something. Uh, all of these mundane items, and so the world got together, a bunch of different organizations around the world formed the Aspel Arcana to control the baubles, as they're called. They're called many different things, but one of the names for them is baubles. And so the Aspel Arcana controls the traffic of these magical items. So if you sell or buy, the other person you're doing that transaction with, the other person you're doing that transaction with, uh, has to be an Aspel Arcana member. So Brian's uh, bag of holding, just just to describe a bag of holding, uh, is a bunch of patched together Aspel Arcana patches. So, um, cool. little lore dump there for you that I should have done uh, yesterday. Uh, Brian, it's you good? It's all good. I think I'm back. Okay, Brian, back. I described you as a goblin and okay. as a so. monk. All right, so I don't think anything of what I started to say got through nope. before I froze. You don't like me. I can tell you that much already based on what you've already said. <laughs> I'm short. I'm very dark green. My oh, teeth are man. jagged and messed up with, like, almost black eyes. Um, I'm wearing, like, loose-fitting clothing, just light clothing with, like, a leather vest. I have a whip hanging from one belt, or from my belt, which... Lately, you've actually right now, you would have seen me just, it's just like dragging behind me really sad because I'm so close to the ground. It just kind of drags 10 feet behind me. Um, and a few other weapons hanging from my belt and a bow that's way too big for me um, slung across my back. I look cool. very out of place. I also have a cowboy hat, but I'm not <laughs> pretty, not cute whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're and... all going to get along so well. <laughs> This is Nihilus 2.0. Uh... I know, right? <laughs> We're about to fight. <laughs> um, anyway, so where were we? Uh, before you leave, the Baba goes, Oh, yes, one more thing. Um, and she pulls out a bag of keys, and she starts going through them and dumping them out randomly on the table, and she finally, just uh, after randomly dumping them, grabs a key and she hands it to whoever will take it. She won't give it to Austerin, but she gives you a key that looks like that, and she says, in case you need this, I would like this back, but in case you need this, um, you will know when to use it regarding my iron teeth, but uh, this is the key you'll need. And, uh, I'll take it. Ashwin, you have a key from the Baba Yaga. And yes, I do realize it's just Baba Yaga. I like saying the Baba Yaga. Or the Baba. It's more fun. Um, so you can make a custom item in D&D Beyond or write it down, Ashwin. Got it. Uh, and you guys are on your way. So you head out of Ista, which is decidedly different than uh, entering those of you who have left or entered the northern city of uh, Innis, it's decidedly different in that it's, instead of rolling hills, it's very swampy and um, flat. And you head southeast, and after about a day's travel, um, you wake up in the morning. Actually, we'll skip to that. What do you guys talk about on your journey, your day's journey? to the Fey Crossing. So, Austerin, do you, do you walk, or do you just fly? I am <laughs> like constantly float. hovering and flying. My feet never touch the ground. Okay. If have they do, your feet ever touch the ground? They have, only because um, we pixies, when we fly, we emit our glow. So, if we're trying to... Um, be a little bit more stealthy. We keep low to the ground, but our wings emit this luminous light that you see before you. I also oh, so you imagine sleeping stealth. while flying be a little awkward. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Well, so where um, are you from? Where are you from, Austin? So I am from the Plain of Fairy, 
known to you mortals as the Feywild, a magical, wonderful realm where uh, the world is constantly under twilight. Um, I live with uh, those of the Sealy, or known to you maybe as the Summer Court, under the rule of the Grand Queen Titania, uh, who Do rules the Feywilds with emotions and are you, uh, various Are colors. you immortal? I was going to say, you keep referring to us as mortal. Does that mean you can't die? Uh, I believe not. No, not many of my brethren have ever died in the Feywild, unless they were killed. I was gonna say, like, does that mean, like, if I took out a knife and stabbed you, it wouldn't do nothing, but you just said you could get killed and just not die of old age. Let's see if you can stab me first, then. <laughs> no. Wait, are you asking? No, 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 not asking. Okay. Just tempting. So you, you remember, like, the erasure happening. So, clarify for this, does yeah. the erasure affect the Feywilds? Um, no. it, it, uh, there's definitely not as much... As far as you know, there's not as much written uh, literature out there, for lack of a better term, in, in the Feywild. It's more oral tradition uh, and storytelling, performative storytelling. Uh, just as ac some of the best storytellers are going to be in the Feywild, but there were people who were affected by the erasure in the Feywild, and but it was hard to determine so like what you might have heard is like so and so went mad but going mad in the feywild is not a big deal and it happens all the time uh so these things wouldn't have been figured out by many people that it was some extra planar event or some something that happened on material or whatnot many fey wouldn't have even cared uh, right. that that happened but you probably some close friends of yours maybe kind of s secondary friends acquaintances maybe you had an experience only like one or two where you know that they were there for an event that you were at and they're having no recollection of certain things so you kind of know something's up um, we can make a let's just make a what are you are you proficient in history or i am proficient in history okay make a history check and i will tell you if you know it's what uh, the material calls the erasure let's see so 15 plus 4 so 19 yeah cool Okay, one sec. Just Someone looking up. Someone sounds smart. <laughs> uh, so, in the Feywild, it was called the uh, cleansing uh, by some. But it definitely hasn't been investigated by many people as much as it has on the material. But the term you've heard is the cleansing. Um, and then anybody who talks about a Feywild-wide event might call it, like, a, a, a disease of madness or something to that effect. Not Non-learned people may call it something like that, but you've heard scholars and people whom you respect refer to it as the cleansing. So, um, yeah. To answer. I say all Yeah, of, there you go. I say all of that. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and um yeah you guys anything else or I will continue so Rilo Rilo's mm -hmm. what's your story <laughs> we really we have just met you oh that's a good point what do you mean what's my story <laughs> well, what, are you, what are you out for the last guy we were walking around with wanted <laughs> enough money to start a pig farm <laughs> Yeah. Uh, getting paid, make a lift. Like, why, why are you all here? I mean, like, apparently you're a goblin. You've got a weird tattoo. You've got a stick you need to fix. And you're a pixie. Exactly. Can't I just be a guy with a job? 
I guess so, just not many people would pick this job, I don't think. I mean, I, I used to just cut down trees. You know, this job's <laughs> really lucrative, right? I mean, I suppose. It just seems a bit risky. That's I mean, why it's lucrative. High risk, high reward. Well, sure, but you could have a good life when, without it. Yeah, that's it's called like, like hobby, run, right? that's like running a tavern, and then people like us would show up talking about great things, and I'd kind of be there, be going like, "Oh yeah, I wish I could do that." No, I just went and did it. I, I suppose that's one way of looking at it. I well, mean, like rolls us can also eyes. just like kind of. I mean, are you all show up and steal people? With people like me, you're all everybody's all like, "So what's where are you from? What tragic thing happened?" Well, my parents didn't show up to me. To me, birth. I don't know. What do you, What would you want me to say? What happened back then don't really oh, matter. God. What happens is where I'm going. I mean, we didn't want sure. you to say that. Sure. That, I mean, I get that, but where are you going? Just the next job? Yeah. All right. To each their own, I suppose. Exactly. Like, I don't want to have a pig farm. That just sounds weird. <laughs> it, 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 fair enough. It, it, he was a weird guy. A weird I don't, I don't guy. doubt it. <laughs> I, yeah. I just wanted to know, like, who you are a little bit, so, like, if something bad happens, you're not just gonna hightail and run dead. You I mean, to know who you are. any of us could do that. You're just looking for an excuse if I do that, why I did it. But I'm not gonna do that, because then I don't have a job. So that means you're a good guy. That's all I needed to know. I trust these two. We've gone through some shit together. I, don't I mean, know we you. went some shit through some shit together. Did you see that dragon made of flowers? That thing crazy. Look, let's not talk about the dragon flowers. <laughs> exactly. That's why, like, I don't want to. Let's the next job. The next job. This job is getting very bad with that dragon. Next job. So okay. Like, the tea. This is gonna get weird. This is gonna get weird. Yeah, Oscar. It, it, it's always weird. We sleep in the same bed. I'm not what? sleeping in the same no, bed. Uh, Ashwin, uh, that's not even what I'm talking about. I'm, uh, I'm just like... I can set up a con. Putting, I've got putting over my shoulder an Oster in. <laughs> it's gonna I get can... weird. Look who's guiding us. It's gonna get weird. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> How big is Oster? He is about one foot six inches. <laughs> oh <my laughs> the smallest of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're trying to come from my cuteness gig and my shortness gig, I see. <laughs> I don't think... Y it'll be the same effect, Ashwin or Lex, as Nihilus. Nihilus was a good-looking Triton, but his personality had a different effect than Ashwin's on people. Does that make <laughs> sense? Yes. Definitely. Um... So, we uh, need Nihilus back now. Have a have those two go at it. Have a walk off or off. something? Or, <laughs> yeah. Pretty off. Uh, so I, it was definitely a cute off. <laughs> he wanted to be the cutest. Yeah, he was not happy with Ashwin uh, getting compliments. Um, so Austerin, when you hear them like saying how weird the weird shit they've seen and the petal dragon being weird. Like, that's oh, a, not prepared for the yeah, Baywatch. Yeah, that's a that's a <laughs> that's norm. That's an everyday. That's mm -hmm. standard, and also that's just kind of trying to uh, frame it for you. And then also you see them once you know the talking the night before the talking dies down. People are starting to go to sleep. They sleep in at least three of them do. We don't know what Rylos and you do, but you see. Ashwin and Prati and you see a goblin, a Kenku, and a mouse folk all, all all cuddle together in a small area. How do you, what do you guys do? Like we combine our bed we like put our unroll our bed rolls all next to each other and I like, sleep in his hat. I mean polyamory is very common in the Feywild. That's true. But there's no <laughs> I just like they set up their bedrolls and Rylos just kind of like like a good like distance away from like as far away as he can just kind of sets his bedroll up and just like beds down like weirdos. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any 
anything sexual going on, but it's just like Not matter matter of factly they just kind of like oh, it's another night, so let's just you know, set this up. And so you might think like, oh, it's polyamory, something, but nothing <laughs> happened. So for you, Austerin, it's weird in that way. Okay. But for Rylos, it's weird in the way that like, why are they that close together? So, yeah, um, so there's a lot safer over here, Rylos, but do it, do it your mom. <laughs> I'm no. good. If you go missing in, in the night, don't blame us. <laughs> How far away are you from the group, Rylos? Are we sleeping outdoors or indoors? You're outdoors. Okay, figured. Uh, not like, I'd say like a solid 10 feet. Okay. And how long is your your whip, Crispy? What the, what the range? I actually think that, that trait of it is 30 feet. Okay. Um, so you're, you're still within the realm of safety also you still need to get that whip checked out because it's acting funny uh you'll have to do it next time with baba it was acting funny yeah it was not working well at least you had said you wanted to get it checked out because it was not working as reliably as it had in the past oh i don't remember that okay twitching and shaking no and various chance. things so yeah no problem um what? So, is this gonna get weirder than what happened to Prady and Nihilus when they got when they lied in the mirror thing? Oh, uh, about that weird. Oh, okay, yeah, we can handle this. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I had forgotten about the. the we uh... thought you want, Austin. You want to talk about ugly? You don't even want to know what Nihilus looked like. No, well, I don't. Well, well, After what... seeing all of you. <laughs> It really wasn't what Jesus he Christ. looked like. It's what you thought you looked like when you looked at it. You wouldn't have liked it. It was not cute. It makes you look terrible when you look at him. It's, it's like a fun un house. It's unpleasant. Me look terrible? Impossible. <laughs> yeah, we should go find Nyla. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So who can breathe underwater? <laughs> yeah, um. he's probably pretty deep. Okay, so you guys sleep the night with no problems, and uh, wake up the next morning, have a little brekkie, and head out. And Austerian, you're taking them to the Fey Crossing, uh, which is in a field of geysers, just um, a little bit inland. It's between this massive lake in the middle of southern of this continent not that you would know anything about the continent but it's from what you've seen at this fey crossing when you crossed over a field of geysers and a massive lake it looked like there was two oceans on either side of you um one of them's a lake though and the other is a, an ocean a bay uh and so you guide them to this to these uh this field of geysers and you know you have to jump in austere and so um Explain how you explain to them how to cross this Fey Crossing, which is essentially wait until a, this specific geyser's done and you hop in the hole. Um, so none of you here have wings, so it's going to be quite interesting for you all. So this portal of water here will rise, and once it falls and it's gone, you will all jump through. Any questions? What happens at the other end? Uh, you'll see. Also, um, Austerin. <laughs> Austerin, uh, the other side of the crossing is. I will. I will wait to describe it, but you know, there's a a group, a community of halflings that inhabit this area, and okay. um, you don't think there will be a problem based on the makeup of the current group you have. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Since there's not a problem, I don't need to explain anything more about what you know. When you guys hop in, I assume you guys all hop in, or do you want to uh, Do you want to figure something else, another way to do it? Nope, I hop in. I, got I hop in. 
I'm gonna Let's front go. flip. Dave? Yeah, I hop right in. Okay. So when you hop in, uh it's your vision goes a little milky and then it, the brightness of the colors speed up and you're rushing uh past the drabness that was this this geyser field and everything starts to refocus and come to and you think you are still moving through the air like you were falling just a second ago but now you're moving instead of the falling feeling now you're moving you feel like as things are focusing up into the air and you whatever you're you're on something and it's not water you think it may be a tree or something and your vision focuses more and you're on this multicolored tree that's shooting through the air and uh, falling now and make everyone needs to make an acrobatics uh, save a deck save as you're falling towards this big pile of tree logs trees that have been ejected from this hole Acrobatics or dex? Dex save, sorry. Okay. Dang it. Oh, what wild me. Is that uh, just a... That's a natural one. Oh, shoot. Uh, Kyle, I that'll be a... D20? Yeah, D20, and then... Um, no. Your dex save is... Let me know if you have an issue finding that one. I rolled a seven. <laughs> You roll oh. the seven. Do you need? Did, is that including your dex um, save modifier or? Yeah, that's including my dex save modifier. Okay, so a seven, a one, and a one. I have I a got... one for an eight. Yeah. Oh, an eight. Okay. Uh, Dave, well, I, I rolled. I rolled a one, but it, it's an eight. Yeah. I rolled a one, and it's a ten. If that helps. Um. No, it doesn't. Lex. <laughs> Well, I rolled a 23. Okay. Um, so I got a superhero pose. I yeah. do have slow fall. Oh. What does what does that do? Wait, I uh, can fly. Doesn't that do anything? Good point. I forgot. <laughs> um, I fly. Uh, thank you for reminding me. You're going to need to do stuff like that uh, when I forget because this is... <laughs> okay. Uh, none of these fools can fly. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm okay, right? Yeah, you're fine. Uh, slow Sorry, suckers. <laughs> Slow fall, Brian? Slow fall, use my reaction to reduce falling damage by 40. Oh, okay, yeah, you're fine. Uh, Sweet. So let's see, it's just Rylos then? I love it, but I, I recover. <laughs> uh, yeah, you look horrible as you're recovering, but you don't take damage. You look like, you know when somebody slips on ice and they're trying to regain their balance and they just look like just horrible that's what you look like but you don't take damage rylos you do take seven points of of bludgeoning damage as you come down it's a really weird feeling obviously because you are you just jumped into a hole next thing you know you were being propelled through the air instead of down you're now going up and this tree that was going up is now falling back down into a massive pile acres and acres of tree logs these trees are multicolored they don't look dead at all, but they're just getting shot out of these geysers around you. Um, it's just a field of tree geysers. And uh, Austerian, you're flying above these people, and they, Ashwin landed on a toppled log from a previous uh, ejection. And yeah, you guys are in the Feywild now, and you know that there's halflings about Austerian. And um, they're cannibal halflings, <laughs> but they only eat humans. Oh, uh, perfect. Medium sized <laughs> and above. Um, oh, perfect. But they don't know that yet. If you don't want to tell them, you don't have to tell them. Oh, are they are they like watching us right now at the moment? You think they're watching you? You don't see them because they're that good. Um, unless you want to make okay. a perception check, because your passive perception is not that good. I can make a perception check. Uh, 
I get an 11. Yeah, you don't see them. You know they're around. Um, but, uh, yeah. You know you are in the forest of... Um, can I, like, call out in Sylvan? Do they speak Sylvan? Yes, they do. They speak uh, Sylvan. Uh, can I let them know that these strange, ugly creatures should not be harmed for they are under the protection of Queen Titania? Uh, sure. If any of you others, uh, players speak Sylvan, you can understand this. If you don't, you hear, similar to the Petal Dragon... A, a, a sing-songy uh, kind of beautiful language um, and so you say that Austerin, they, you don't get a response uh, they're very secretive from what you know about them um, they're called uh, willowlings and Oh, we got to do the forest stuff now. Oh, right. Okay. So, so are we like surrounded by trees, literally shooting into the air and then falling on the ground at random places? Yeah, around you. Um, it's a met like acres and acres. Have you seen? Right. Have you seen? Um, like when I, a part. I'm of... just trying to gauge, like our danger of a tree falling on us from getting shot out of a geyser. You can see these trees, so like. Um, they're not unless you like look at it if you're looking at it and you don't I don't. I assume you're gonna move is what I'm saying okay. and, and they're so Good. large and they're so <laughs> high up that like you can right. get hit if you don't move um, and you being a monk especially like uh, I'm not gonna this doesn't... I was just curious it doesn't seem like the safest place we should probably move along <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so if you've seen a clear-cut forest where loggers have come through and they're pulling logs up the side of a mountain and uh, so the lumberjacks come through and cut down the trees before the logs get pulled up and they're just kind of cross-hatched on the ground it looks like that except these trees are multicolored iridescent a little bit and um, it's about like every minute or so minute or two that these trees are being shot out of these various geysers so it's not like a constant machine gun. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, what was I saying before that? Um, oh, yeah, you're in Torwick, the forest of Torwick. Austerin, I'm telling you this. Uh, you don't have to tell them if they, uh, if you don't want to. Um, of course, the rest of you can ask. Um, I need each... He lets them know. Okay. I'll let them know. I'll uh, let them know. I need each of you except Austerin to roll a d6. Not when I was rolling. You were reaching for. That's a four. One. Four. Five. Um, Crispy, what'd you get again? One. <laughs> um, and Prodi, what did you get? I'm sorry. Cinco. Okay, now I gotta check this thing. Okay. I'm just gonna say right now, I think we should go to the Pumpkin King first. That does sound wanna, great. You just wanna check out the Mouse King, don't you? Yes! Absolutely! <laughs> and Prodi awesome. wants to go too, because there's the Crow's Nest, so that's already two votes there. Yeah, I gotta see what this Crow's Nest is all about. Time by noon. Um... So, you know... Austerin, that the crow's nest doesn't refer to crows uh, and it refers to scarecrows because the pumpkin king uh, employs, for lack of a better term, uh, a bunch of scarecrows. And this is where they live. 
Uh, Prati is pretty certain it doesn't have to do with actual crows in an actual nest. He's heard it. He's he's heard it used as a uh, non-bird term. Meta a metaphor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ashwood fully thinks we're going to a giant crow's nest. <laughs> and like a giant crow is gonna like feed Prati like two two birds, mama bird. Sure. She's dumb as rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um so for the quest, are are we visiting each of the the courts? Quote unquote. Uh you get season? you got three locations, uh two of which are courts, spring and autumn. I see. Um, okay. You can do whatever you want, of course, um, but that's the information you got from the Baba. Uh, also, you know about uh, the forest of Torwick and many forests in the Feywild is that they are the forest, the, the area uh, has sentience, and... It has opinions of things that visit it, and um, whether it calls them guests or invited guests or unwelcome guests is affected by what they do, especially beings that are not from the Feywild. So you are quite a w well aware that, like, if the forest doesn't like somebody, it's going to do some stuff to, oops, there's a root you were sure wasn't there a second ago as you're running. As you're running forward, you're sure there was, that was a clear path, and then all of a sudden a root was there, and you trip and fall on your face. So the forest will do things like that. Uh, only Austerin knows this. Um... And also, oh yeah, Prodi, didn't need your reminder. Um, as soon as you come onto this plane, you are like in knots, essentially. The feeling that you have when you see a mess somewhere, um, it's like that at this point. Um, you're not sure if it's because it's a mess of logs that you're on, or if it's just this new plane of existence. Um, but you're not feeling good. Got it. What's what's the effect dice wise? Um, like I have disadvantage, or what was the effect of the rod of law when you don't do something? I don't remember. Yeah, it's okay. I'll have to look that up. I think it's in your character sheet, in like if you click on um, the Rod of Law. But you can look at that while I continue. Um, so, where do you guys go? Um, so, Astarin would recommend going to the Spring Court instead, as those of Spring are aligned with the Summer Court. Um, they would have an easier time for him to negotiate with King Oberyn they, uh, regarding yeah. that realm. They usually yeah. are aligned with the Summer Court, um, but it's not like a hard and fast rule. Also, you're aligned with the Summer Court, and you are a Spring Pixie, and you yes. know that that does not go over well with King Oberon. And so your upbringing in the Summer Court and relationships in the summer court, court um, does not work in your favor with some people in the spring court. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, talk amongst yourselves. Where do you want to go? Y'all said We're... Pumpkin King. I'm okay with a Pumpkin King. I like pumpkins. I have a few votes for the Why, Court of he, Autumn. He sounds rich. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he has king in his title. He's obviously got some. Man, you're all about the money. There's two Man. kings. There's the mouse king, too. Right, King Zipa Cheap. He's also in the Court of Autumn. So, uh, Austerin, what do you know of the Court of Autumn? Uh, they're not the most pleasant folk. I'll tell you that for now. 
keep in mind Was, he has very strong opinions. Yeah. <laughs> I have very strong opinions about um, those who are aligned with Unseelie, and those of Autumn tend to be of the Unseelie. Ah. And, and what, do, what would you say about what would you say about the court, the, the summer court? Like, do you have anything nice to say about them? Oh, yes. The loveliest of all four. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so um, the autumn and spring court change alliances between the winter and summer, um, being that they do, like, the autumn is, is next to uh, summer and winter. Spring is the same deal. So there's no, um, and this is for you, Austerian, as well. It's less about, the seasons just represent a, a general opinion of what the Feywild should be. So the Summer Court has a very strong ideal about what the Feywild should be, and the Winter has a different ideal. Um, there's no blanket good and bad, although your character might think that. It is yeah. the the thing they all have in common is chaos abounds for the most part. It's either cha uh, it's a chaotic pl uh, plane or it's neutral. Um, things that are lawful and lawful beings that try to impose lawful rules upon the Feywild will find that um, they will <laughs> it's it's essentially like slapping an entire plane in the face so just keep that in mind Austerin and if any of you want to roll history checks um, if you're proficient in history uh, I am to see if um, you know this information let me know what you get that's a 13 plus 6, so that's 19. Yeah, you know um, about the Summer Court. Essentially everything I said you know about the good and bad. It's not, there's no black and white good and bad, although each court thinks they're right. Um, you know that uh, chaos is smiled upon and um yeah so some of the more nitty-gritty stuff i described you might not know but basically the general gist of it rylos you do know um okay. so where what did you decide pumpkin king. i also say pumpkin king uh, I, I, think, I think this King Zipa chief sounds nicer, but it's in the same direction. So yeah, Court of Autumn, it sounds like. The lands of Autumn. I think he'll like me. Uh, I think we have an end with Ashwin, with King Zipa chief. Very well, peasants. This way. <sighs> Sweet God, it's Nihilus. Oh, man, I, didn't know we had, I didn't know we had royalty with us. Interesting. <laughs> What's it like getting your hands dirty with us peasants? <laughs> it's quite awful. All of you are so ugly. So, so disgusting. I'm Especially so the wrong. goblin. Well, you're not wrong, so I, I suppose <laughs> that's fine. Aww. Well, if, you're, if you're royalty, why do you work for Baba Yaga then? Oh, I don't work for Baba Yaga. I work oh. for Queen Titania of the Summer Court. Oh. Hmm. Why so are why you listening is... to Baba? That's actually interesting. Didn't Baba say that she has problems with Queen Titania? It's complicated. And none mm. of your mortal business. Oh, okay. Oh. Alright. I'm just gonna Fuck say... Fuck a nerve there. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think any of us are mortals. You're lucky. Of course not. I already died once. Yeah, you're not so a I'm human sorry. anymore. Anymore? I don't think uh, I've ever been a human. Nope, never been a human, just a goblin. Ashwin, no, no, no. not got the information here. Bad, bad. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm only referring to you as mortals before, because I'm sure all of you will die someday in the material plane. Yeah. Well, with any luck, you will too. Let's go! <laughs> uh, so, heading to the Autumn Court will take you a few days. 
as you're exiting the the plane of tree geysers, um, make a well. I already got that one. Rylos, you notice Ooh. familiar eyes looking at you through bushes and maybe like a half dozen or so. It reminds you of, remind me how much experience you have with halfling communities. I mean, I'm, Rylos is a lightfoot. He's very city-based, so uh -huh. he'd know about other halflings yeah because you know it's his it's his people right but he's only really dealt with like with other lightfoots or okay. whatever is in the major city that he was from so from books you've read and experiences you you've had kind of the not only the height of the eyeballs but the um the way in which they're hiding and uh you something in you just just you notice these eyeballs and um as you keep going as do you say something or i would just kind of like lean it not trying to make a big scene but like i'm pretty sure we're being watched right now so nobody do anything crazy and yeah. at, as you keep going you see a lone halfling ahead of you in these in this forest these trees have kind of subsided these multicolored trees have subsided they're starting to thin out but these different trees um that are you can see them growing uh as we speak um you see a halfling in front of you and it has a suit with no sleeves uh, a full suit uh like a formal suit with no sleeves but it's made out of forest materials so a lot of this multicolored tree material and he is standing there with the staff waiting for you guys to get closer he's got a straight face no expression um i will greet him first in sylvan and i will say salutation stranger uh in the name of the summer court uh please let us pass through and the rest of us just hear like what sounds like jazz scat. <laughs> <laughs> jazz scat. <laughs> Supposed to be a pretty flowery, flowery elvish language. Thank you very much. It's it's I jazz was, scat now. <laughs> it's jazz scat now. I'm sorry. That was oh, the gosh. best <laughs> description. Uh, it it's canon. Um, so, so you hear, ba -da -ba 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 and you, you hear, you hear that. Anyways, uh, he says, he says, uh, what is your business in the Torwick? Uh, merely escorting these ugly creatures through. Do you have any larger beings with you? No, not at all. Never. And these four are from the other plane? They are, yes. Can you not tell by their appearances? Of course I can Disgusting. tell. I was just making sure. Of course. Are all of you summer court people the same in your arrogance? Is it just my experience that those of you who come through the forest are that way? Arrogant? Not at all, friend. He gives the guy a wink. There's an actual definition for arrogance, and I hope you find it someday, friend. Uh, and he says, well, as you're passing through, and he speaks in common, so all of you can understand. And he says, we're going to have a feast for your arrival to welcome you to this wondrous plane in the right way. Ooh, food's delicious. I agree. Uh... And uh, at this point, you see a dozen other halflings dressed in similar garb, maybe not as nice, um, a little more raggedy, uh, 
halflings approach and they're focused on you, Rylos, uh, because you look like them, but you're not from the Feywild and they're just like super like just watching your every movement. Uh, not in like a scared way, but just like in a in an interested like he's like us but not like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like let's try to find out what's similar and what's dissimilar. I'm uh, kind of doing the same thing because I'm again city halfling. This is like like I'm meeting the country and I'm from the city, so we both have like that mutual interest in one another. Yeah, and um, these halflings are whispering in each other's ears. And they're laughing, and then as soon as they start laughing, you see some of them start yelling, uh, s seemingly get angry, just spontaneously angry on a dime, and then it can switch back. You see a lot of change in emotion when they're interacting. Um, uh, it's an extreme difference to what all of you experience in on the material. Um, it's, it's as if, like, you're in a very popular bar on a weekend, and everyone is drunk, and everyone, you just see people switching and, and uh, flying off the handle, and then all of a sudden, just being buddy-buddy with that person, making up, and just, it's just a real uh, odd sight. Um... And if you guys agree, they take you to their little village. I assume you do. Um, I send, or I cast uh, the cantrip message. Yes. To each, to each of everyone in the party. And I warn them about eating food uh, in the Wild. Okay. Um, and all of you, all of you can uh, respond to the message uh one essentially one at a time but yeah i responded just so like, eh, my goblin stomach can take it it can eat just about <laughs> anything and uh any of you, the rest of you respond to austerin yeah you you know we are only get you gotta live your life to the fullest man didn't catch that ashwin but it was essentially yolo <laughs> cool cool uh we need to come up with like the D D version of yolo i don't want it to be yolo but uh there should be a version until you get with other that we'll figure it out yeah sure you um, can live way more times than once <laughs> it's true uh <laughs> So this Willowling, seemingly the leader, he introduces himself to all of you in, in common as President's Elver. Uh, and he lengthens the Z. President's Elver. Um, and they escort you to their, to their village. And it is built into trees somewhat, as well as um, fallen trees have been have been uh, milled, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm missing the term I want, have been milled to to create this, this these structures and buildings, which are, um, it's a beautiful, everything you've seen so far is just gorgeous, um, other than some of the disconcerting things you've seen. Um, so basically, people are already cooking, and you it looks like the festival was already being prepared for as you arrive and um there's this massive long table and they offer you to sit and keep in mind this is for halflings but it doesn't matter because all of you are of similar height uh <laughs> and uh the the uh, president says welcome to our new guests First journey to the Feywild, and here they dine with us. We are honored that you would come here and not bring any humans from the material with you. Although, I can't say we wouldn't have enjoyed their company 
and starts laughing uh, along with some of the other halflings in this village. And I laugh along with them. <laughs> um, I'm trying to fit in. Sure. Uh, so he says, and now for the first course. And they bring out some some meat. It doesn't look like meat you've ever seen before, but it's bone in, and it's like imagine cutting. It's gonna get a little gross, but just imagine um, the cross section of a leg, like a le like your leg or someone's leg, and it's just like beautifully decorated pieces of meat like that with the most beautiful flowers and garnishes you've ever seen in your life surrounding it. Um, and people come around and offer you uh, bacon grease chips, bacon with a G, um, and they offer you ale. They call it Susi Ale. And uh, yeah, what do you guys do? Drink um, it. We're, yeah, eat all the food. Okay. Astarin politely declines and claims that he is a vegetarian. There's plenty of uh, of fruits and uh, foliage for you to eat, Austerin. Uh and it's stuff you've eaten before. Like it's not. Um, oh, very well then. You you don't, your alarm bells aren't going off. Um, yeah, and you eat it. I'm... Yeah, go I ahead. I look at Asterian like, like, is Asterian eating? Because he just said don't eat anything. And Baba <laughs> also said don't eat anything. So I'm just like looking around at yeah. the entire party like, what are you all doing? They're eating. I'm just going to sit there and like, like look like I'm eating and then just kind of like, like, uh, slide a hand the food away from me. Make a slide of hand like, check. Uh, as a... <laughs> Thirteen plus. So you get. So I'm gonna use that no. roll as your. Just so twenty five. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> fucking rogues. As your general, general roll twenty five will be your score, and uh, you keep doing that, and uh, you don't think anyone. People are still watching you because of who you are, but they're not. You don't. You're not. You don't think they're catching on to what you're doing. Um, those of you who are eating the meat, it's unlike anything you've ever tried before. Um, not long pork. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the fruits and vegetables are delicious. They do cause you to feel a little bit, um, foggy, like, uh, drunk, not drunk necessarily, but maybe a little buzzed, not giddy or giggly, but um, just a little different. Um, also, the ale doesn't help. So, if you have one <laughs> mug of ale, roll a, make a constitution save. 19. 19 as well. Damn. Sorry. No ale for the star. Okay. Same for Rylos. Are you not eating at all, Rylos? Uh, nope. I got rations. Mm -hmm. Alright. Just slight of handing the ale <laughs> down past <laughs> your shoulder. <laughs> Listen, man, the ale, like, the cup, the cup just disappears. Water just disappears. You have a tiny oh, yeah, bowl of it just, like, streaming through. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine how you You rolled really well, but I can't imagine how... Like, it's got to be so impressive to somebody who knows I'm... what's going on. Roll the two. Oh, shit, oh. Dave. Dave, uh, <laughs> you definitely think a piece of skin was in your ale. Uh, and it tastes the same, but, um, yeah, you're, you're pretty darn sure it's a piece of skin. And you start to panic. You're already a little wound up from where you are. And you start to hallucinate. Um, you start to see people from the street you saw just a couple days ago on the table cut into pieces. Um, 
yeah, you're starting to hallucinate. Uh, while this is going on, Rylos, uh, President Elver, uh, comes and sits next to you and says, Another one of us, huh? Kind of. I wouldn't say... I'm from a different place, you know. Not from this realm, from the material realm, the mortal realm. What do, what do you call it? Oh, this is... The material plane. Thank you. I'm from the material plane. Yes. Uh, what do you think of the human? Uh, it's uh, quite tender, you know, in comparison to, like, the human we have where I'm from, where they're a lot rougher and they're a lot more grittier. We actually don't eat a lot of human. We have this thing called pig and cow. And my personal favorite, I just lean in real close, just chicken. We have, do you have, we have flying cows. We don't eat them, though. That's quite gross. They are... Oh, no, our cows, our cows are not like the flying cows here. We also are, like, very good. Very, very good. I got, like, a, I think I got, like, jerky. You want to try it? It kind of tastes like human, kind of. They tell us... Power. We have stories about eating food from the material. We, we, we... I don't know if they're true, but... Will it... They tell us not to eat it. Then I don't want to risk it. Okay. Honestly, I like all of you are being so hospitable towards us, and I want to make sure that you know if there's any little bit of risk, I don't want to do something that would endanger you or anybody else here. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're too kind. Uh, a lot of, a lot of fae expect favors for favors, and in, in just a never-ending cycle of favors and we willowlings do not work that way uh this is purely purely out of the goodness of our heart to welcome you to the feywild of course if you know anything were to happen to us we would hope that our hospitality would at least cause you to think about helping us in any way but that is neither here nor there, bring out the main course, and you see. Can I can I roll a? Bring it out. Yeah. Can I roll an insight on that? Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Uh, I roll fifteen plus what? Nineteen. You think he's like full of sh n not like blatantly full of shit, but you think like. He's just saying that to make his guest feel better. Like, it's not... That's not how he expects favors, and he kind of insinuated it in a backhanded way anyways. Um, yeah, so that's what you got from that insight check. Um, he doesn't have any, th any like, uh, negative or, or anything ulterior than that, but... Uh, yeah, that's what you think. Um, and the main course comes out, and there's drums starts playing, and uh, in common, you hear uh, President Elver announce from the material plane, from the slopes of the northern mountains of Einvar, and he says Envir just in a weird way, and... Uh, the Goliath of a Goliath of the roast and uh, this Goliath has brought out massive humanoid figure and that's your main course Prada you know exactly not who this is but you've seen tribe members of this roast barbarian oh, so these are this is a version of a roast barbarian wow. okay. and a Goliath <laughs> is a half giant essentially um, so, massive. And Prani's just kind of hallucinating. He's just like, why do you... Like, why why do you guys have wings coming out of your chest? It's just... Yeah. Just stop flapping your chest wings. Um, don't do I'll that. Tr I'll try. Is, uh... the, is the Goliath already dead and cooked and prepared? Yep. Or is it like, bring out a live Goliath? Gotcha. We're good. Um, Pr Prada, Prada, you, what are you talking about? I thought 
I think oh, I've no had much too much to drink. Okay, well, eat some food. It's it's not good to be rude. We're welcome guests, so you have to eat what they prepared. And as Ashwin's saying oh, that, feels so good. as Ashwin's saying that, uh, various members of the tribe approach each of you, except Austerian, and uh, the president announces that uh, after dinner entertainment, if you like, is here. And there's like various tribe members who are standing close to each one of you, like depending on, there's like three or four of them and they're smiling and they like are trying to euphemistically get to know you, each of you. Oh, oh no, no! Please, I'm, and that, I'm just gonna get some Goliath. And and that's where <laughs> we'll we'll leave it for this session. Um, cannibal just halfling party. Uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? Oh, nothing, oh. nothing. It's just gonna be fine. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, episode thirty-seven of Venture Ventures. We're gonna go around the table. Players, please plug whatever you'd like to plug. And uh, we'll close it out after that. We'll start with our newest player, Kyle. Yay. Hi, everyone. Kyle here. I play the snobby cutie pie pixie Ostaran Whisperwing. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at it's Rita Kyle. I T S R I D I Kyle. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Liam. Hi, everybody. I am Liam. I play Rylos Blackweed. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Liam Neary, just my name. Uh, I will be on Enter the Hex, which is a another live stream. Don't die on my computer. Another live stream that uh, films down in Provo. I will be on next weekend, so the weekend, uh, uh, the first weekend of August. Cool. And yep. Excellent, uh, Lex. Yo, I'm Lex. You can find me everywhere at It's Lex the Alien. Um, you can find me on Scabby Rooster every Tuesday. I'm Bishop. It's a real cool LARP thing. Yeah. Come check it out. Shit goes down. <laughs> Excellent. Dave. Uh, my name is Dave Roderick. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, DRod3. And nothing to plug, because I'm Traveling for work every single work day for the for the foreseeable future. I know that feeling. Brian. And I'm Brian, and you can't find me. Not that I know why you would be looking. Uh, but yeah, I'm just here to play D and D, so that's me. And I am your dungeon master, Jake Friday. You can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday, Instagram at Jake of the Friday. Follow our show on Twitter and Instagram at Venture Ventures to remain updated on everything. Uh, but without further ado, be good to yourself and please be good to others. And join us next week, same time, same place, same channel. See you later.